Hey everybody, this is Alex Fabrica coming at you again with another Teaching Tips Tuesday. Today I have with me Carrie Vogiatis. She is one of our incredible physical therapists here at Foundation for Blind Children. How are you doing today, Carrie? Doing great. So Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And you are here to kick off our first Teaching Tips Tuesday series. That series being about how visual impairments impact the development of children. Now, before we get into any of that, I think it's important that we cover incidental learning, since that's something we're going to be talking about across this entire series. And that is incidental learning is skills that you pick up simply by watching somebody else do them without needing to be explicitly taught. An example that you like to give is how to rock a baby, for example. Nobody ever taught me that this is what you do, but I saw somebody rocking a baby and thought that's probably it. So now that we have a bit of a handle on incidental learning, I figure since you are a PT, you probably want to start with motor skills. Sure, I do. Um, if you even start to think about all the things, all the motor skills that you learn by watching, you, your list will be very, very long once you actually start thinking about it. Uh, kicking a ball, throwing a ball, all these different things. And mainly what how it affects de, um, motor development, the lack of vision, is because vision is the primary motivator to move. Sound is secondary, but it's a distant secondary because you have to then make sense of what the sound is then to be motivated to move toward it. But when babies are young and they look and see, they're seeing things that are interesting to them and that's gonna encourage them to turn their head, roll, or move out of their, their small area. The other thing is if you don't have vision or you have a visual impairment where you can't see that there's a world beyond you, then you're not going to be interested in moving out into that world, so to speak, or you may not be interested in, in moving out into that world. And so that lack of movement opportunities when you're young can affect our proprioceptive um, development. And We're talking can, about like young infant to toddler range right now, right? Yes, we are talking okay. about new babies, um, but but these skills through new babies, but then toddler age as well. Because um, a lot of times what happens when you're born, you're, you're held, you're cuddled, you're you're starting to be aware that your body is related to you. Like we have a, the body's amazing. We have this reflex called the 18R. And it's then we see that our hand is part of us. And we learn that self-concept that, that this hand is part of our body and then our vision and our hands are related. Um, and so, as we develop and then as we get a little bit older and we might do rough and tumble play wrestling we develop our proprioceptive uh, skills or senses and same with our vestibular and the vestibular is balance and the proprioceptive is just knowing where our body is in space and so that's both are very important so if you don't have all those movement opportunities then the sensory system is going to be affected as well because you know all the senses and all the different systems are connected so what you want to do if you have a baby who has limited vision or a child, you want to encourage exploration. You want to provide motivating opportunities. You want to encourage them. You want to rustle, rustle and rough and tumble and do all those things. You just will do it safely. What's you definitely, we've seen plenty of parents where they want to wrap that new visually impaired baby in bubble wrap and they want to keep them in a perfectly climate controlled space so there's never any, but you Babies fall, that's what babies do, and that's not going to happen if they don't move. No, and it makes sense why, right? I mean, okay. the parents are being the best parents they can. So it's just an opportunity for parental education and to encourage that and to nudge them. And, you know, a lot of times it is the parent training that's going to help the child the most. Um, so one of the things that we're going to see um, with gross motor is that you might have delayed gross motor skills, the development of them. Typically, they'll be learning to sit or to stand. So those static positions are, are developed OK. It's the ones where you need to transition, right? where you're motivated, where you're moving from one place to another. And those are more self-initiated movements. So from laying down to sitting, from pulling onto your knees onto something to see what something's interesting, and then walking itself. Maybe if I didn't have vision, I'd be nervous to walk around because I don't. I might hit something. Or maybe I'm just not motivated because I don't know what's outside in the world around me. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's interesting with motor development is when we're babies and we have vision and we're laying on our tummies, our vision causes us to want to look up on the horizon and see what's there. Um, also, if we're tipped sideways, we write ourselves into midline and that helps us develop our neck control. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see a delay in that as well. Um, so the other thing when, when our kids are learning to walk, um, you may see head down because they don't necessarily have a reason to look up mm -hmm. and then their hands maybe or their shoulders may be rolled and you might not necessarily see 
you know, that typical gait that or that walking pattern that we see with reciprocal arm movement. So we're gonna encourage kids to stand tall. We don't want the muscles in the back of their body getting over lengthened and stretch. Um, and then things like running that we take for granted. You just turn, you watch someone running and running is fast walking. You're challenging yourself out of balance and you're taking that next step. Some of those things might have to be intentionally taught as well. As a I matter of fact, there are going to be, yeah. what's that? No, you go ahead. Well, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of physical motions and activities that will have to be or intentionally taught that we take for granted because we we watch someone do it. Definitely. I was I was very surprised when I started as a classroom teacher and I needed to work on running with my students and then running and swinging on a swing set. I realized how if you can't physically or visually show someone how to do that, it is an incredibly difficult combination of muscular control to get anything going on a swing set. So, well, yeah, and think about swinging. You have to know where your body is in space. You have to coordinate pulling at the same time with your legs. So if you don't know where you're, and that's a vestibular system, proprioceptive system, and then having someone try to articulate how to tell someone how to do that. If they haven't been able to see someone. So swinging back, is- Go your arms back, bring your legs forward, tighten your core, come up, bring your legs down, bring your, it's a thousand steps you need to do every second. Right. So the bottom line is, Motor can definitely be um, affected and delayed, but with proper encouragement, proper environments, Russell, rough and tumble, and encouraged to move, 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 you're going to be on the right track. Excellent, Carrie. Well, I have one more question for you, and that's why I ask all my guests, and that is, what is your favorite part of your job? Oh, gosh. Well, just about all of it. Um, <laughs> but most exciting thing is when something clicks and there's a ha moment. I actually had one today. We've been working on... Uh, a kiddo learning to sit to stand and that weight shift is so important again it's knowing where your body is in space and today it clicked for this kiddo where she leaned all the way on her own and stood up without anybody's help and it was a milestone for this child and for the family and it was very very exciting i think a lot of people think of like tbis as miracle workers but i think tbis think of pts as miracle workers like we'll teach braille but you teach kids how to stand that is that's incredible i think we all have a part to play on the team that's for sure Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on an episode of Teaching Tips Tuesday today with us, Carrie. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And thank you to everyone at home for giving this a watch. Please join us next week. I believe we'll be talking with an SLP about how social skills develop, and we hope to see you then. Have a good week.